Hi there, and welcome to this video on GCSE Biology for the AQA specification, focusing on cell structure and in particular, microscopy. I'm Shumana from StudyMind, where we help you revise GCSE Biology with our helpful video tutorials, tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. Whilst you are watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything, and let us know if it's your first time watching our videos so we can send you our free revision materials. We also have helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you through the specification. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to tutorial 5 of 6 on microscopy. So, in our last lesson we focused on looking at the process and timing of cell differentiation, so if you're still unsure about that topic then perhaps go back and watch that before proceeding on to this one. So these are our key learning objectives for today, so we'll cover these one by one. And just remember, you can pause the video at any point and rewind and replay for any bits that you don't quite get the first time. So, first of all, let's have a look at the differences in magnification and resolution. So, resolution is the ability to tell the difference between two points. So, for example, here you can see that this image is much blurrier than this image. So the greater the resolution of a microscope, the more detailed the image. So in an image with a low resolution, two nearby objects may look like one. So for example, if I had two dots, in an image with low resolution, these dots may fuse like this. Whereas in an image with high resolution, they would appear as separate dots. That's just an example. And if you were to look at it in terms of an image, as here, as, as shown here, you can see that this image is a lot blurrier than this image. Now let's contrast that to magnification. So magnification is the size of the image compared to the real size of the object. So Let's say this is the object. It has been magnified to create this image. So magnification tells you how big an image is compared to the real object. So what you need to know is the difference between these two terms. So just remember that magnification is the size of the image compared to the real size of the object. Resolution, in contrast, is the ability to tell the difference between two points. So try to use this dot analogy that I was talking about earlier. If something has high resolution, you can differentiate between these two dots. If something has low resolution, the image in general will be much more blurry, so these dots will fuse into one. So both resolution and magnification are important. So resolution is a key factor in the quality of an image taken by a microscope, whilst magnification determines the objects that you can actually see down the microscope. So, for example, cells. The higher the magnification of the microscope, the smaller the object that can be seen through it. And we'll be looking at types of microscope later on in this tutorial. So that's just a summary of what I just said right there. Right, so let's move on to try some calculations involving magnification. So, this is going to be your star equation for this tutorial. So it's very, very simple when you put it into this format. So how it works is if you're moving between segments, so between A and M, for example, that's a, oopsie, oopsie daisy, that's a multiplication. So that's a multiplication across here, across this way. But if you're moving down the triangle, that's a division, and that's a division. So if I were to write these out as standard equations, you would have I equals A multiplied by M, where I is image size, A is the actual size of the object, 
and M is magnification. And don't worry too much about this now, we will be going over this, we'll be looking at some examples. So that's your equation number one. Equation number two would be A equals I over M. And equation number three would be M equals I over A. So can you see how if we want to find out I, we're multiplying across. That's where we get equation number one from. We want to find out A, we're doing I divided by, divided by M. That's equation number two. And in the same way, if we want to find out M, we're doing I divided by A. And that's equation number three over here. So let's look at this in a little more detail. This is going to be your master equation, so I quite suggest you jot this down on a piece of paper and you can use that to come back to as we work through these examples on the next few slides. So, we saw that magnification equals image height divided by object height, or image size over object size. Um, so remember, magnification is defined as the size of the image divided by the size of the real object. So it's, a, it's, it's, it's like a ratio, for example. So you would use a ruler to measure the size of the real object in the image. And you've got to ensure that you are using the same units across both. Because remember, often cells are so small that they're measured in units such as micrometers. But your ruler, your standard ruler, will only measure in, I mean, the smallest units it's going to measure in is going to be millimetres, not micrometres. So do remember to always keep the units the same. You must always, 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 when you're using an equation like this, keep units the same across each constant. Oh, and one more thing before I move on, actually, is that you've got to remember how standard form works. So we actually covered this in tutorial number one. So if you're unsure, perhaps go back. Um, but just to quickly recap, this is your standard form here. And if you have um, a minus a power to the minus three, that means you're moving three places to the left. You're moving the decimal point three places to the left. So if I were to write that down for you, so for example, for this example, um, if we had 5.0, we're moving the decimal place three places to the left. So that's one, two, three. Decimal place goes there. Oopsie. And that becomes 0 0.005. So that's how standard form works. But again, as I said, if you're unsure, go back to tutorial number one because we talk about it in a little, little bit more detail there. So let's work on calculating magnification. So for example, take this sperm cell. So the question says that it measures 10 micrometers in length and it wants you to calculate the magnification of this image. So perhaps try working through this yourself. Um, but I will now be working through it with you, so if you'd rather not, then feel free to do this one with me, but if you're feeling brave, then go ahead, pause the video now, and try to come up with an answer. So, if you tried to come up with an answer, uh, I hope you got 9,400 times for the magnification, um, but don't worry if you didn't, we're now going to work through it and, cut and see why this is the answer. So, Remember your equation. Your equation is magnification equals image height over object height. So I think we said I over A. So you know your actual size of your, of your sperm cell, that's 10 micrometers. We want to calculate the magnification, so the third term that we're going to have to discover is your image size here. So how we do that is look at this image, you put your ruler up next to it, and you measure that it is 9.4 centimetres. So 
Now, remember I said that you've got to make sure that the units are constant. So 9.4 centimetres is your image size, but 10 micrometres is your actual size. So you're going to have to standardise this, which means you either change 10 micrometres into centimetres, or you change 9.4 centimetres into micrometres. So the easiest way to do this is to go from centimetres to micrometres. And we know that there are 10,000 micrometres in a centimetre, so therefore all you do is multiply up by 10,000. So you would do 9.4 multiplied by 10,000, and that will give you 94,000 micrometres. So now that we've got everything in the same units, we've got our actual size, we've got our image size, both in the same units, we can go come back to this formula over here. So magnification equals image size over actual size. Our image size is 94,000 micrometres and our actual size is 10 micrometres. So it's really, really simple. You're just going to plop these numbers into your equation. So this is our image size. And this is our, oopsie, come around the wrong way. It's our actual size. So you're just going to plop 94,000 into the top there. And always write the units because it just kind of gives you a constant reminder that you have remembered to change them. And perhaps if you've forgotten to change your units, as you come to write your units, you'll see that your units haven't been standardised. So it could be a little reminder for yourself and you put your actual size on the bottom and that's going to give you your answer of 9400 for the magnification. So there we are. So it's pretty easy if you just follow the formula and always, always, always remember to standardise the units and keep them the same across the equation. Right, so now that we've done that, let's try a slightly different example. So we're we are shuffling around our equation a little bit and now trying to find the actual size of the nucleus of this animal cell, given that we know its magnification and its real size. So pause the video here and try to work through this and we'll work through it now. So this was the answer that you should have come up with, but we're going to work our way towards that. So same as on the last slide, you want to work out the image size um, and you, you do that using your ruler and because it's a slightly smaller measurement here we've gone for using millimetres so we've worked out that the nucleus is 29 millimetres. Now remember we've got to convert into the correct units so we want to be working in micrometres because we know that the nucleus in an actual cell is going to be very very small so we're going to want to use micrometres as our unit. So you might as well just convert to micrometres now. So to go from millimetres into micrometres, you've got to multiply by a thousand because there's a thousand micrometres in one millimetre. So to get from one millimetre to one thousand micrometres, you've got to multiply by a thousand. So that's how we know we've got to multiply by a thousand. So you would do your image size, 29 millimetres, multiplied by 1,000 to get 29,000 micrometres. Now, this time, we're not going in the same direction around our equation triangle. We want to calculate the actual size of the nucleus, this term. So we're going to be doing your image size over your magnification. And we know our image size is 29,000 micrometers. Remember, always write your units so we remember what units we're working in. And we know our magnification up here, the question tells us, it's 100 times. So we're going to write it like this. And that's going to give us our actual size, so 290 micrometers. So it really is rather simple. Okay, so now we move on to our third example. Um, and so here we're calculating the actual length of this nerve cell in micrometres. 
and we have to give our answer in standard form. So there's a few parts to this question. So first of all, note that we aren't given a magnification. So we're going to have to be working that out ourselves. But we are given this indicator over here. And the second thing that we have to register in this question is that we're asked to give our answer in standard form. So that's just probably an additional mark that you could lose at the end if you forget to do so. So it's an, and, and it's an easy mark to get. So don't um, forget to answer both parts of the question. So pause the video at this point and try to work this out, but don't worry if you're not feeling it or if you can't quite do it because we're now going to go through it together. So this is the answer that we should be coming up with at the end. So, first of all, we are going to work out the image length of the blue line because we've got to work out the magnification, first of all, in order to calculate the actual length because, remember, the equation that we were looking at has three components. So, magnification is image size over actual size of object. So, we have our actual length of, no, we want to calculate our actual length of our nerve cell. We have our image length here, which we're going to work out soon. Um, but we also need our magnification, so that's the um, that's what we're going to focus on here. We're going to calculate that. So first of all, take a look at the image length of the blue line. So it's 20 millimetres in length, as you can see here, or 2 centimetres, as the ruler shows. So these are equivalent. Um, we want to change millimetres into micrometres, of course, because we're always working in micrometres, given that the question is asking for our answer to be in micrometres. And we know that there are, are 1,000 micrometres in one millimetre. Therefore, to go from 20 millimetres, we are going to have to multiply up by the same amount. So that's been multiplied by 1,000. So we're going to be multiplying this by a thousand in order in order to get twenty thousand micrometers. So that's our length of our blue line. So now we can work out our magnification using our same equation. So magnification is image size over actual size. Therefore, we are going to be doing image size, which is um, twenty thousand micrometers. Remember, always write your units so you can just double check against yourself over your actual size, which is 4 micrometers, because it's given here. And that's going to give us our magnification, which is going to be 5,000 times. So that's brilliant. We've worked out our magnification, and now we can go on to work out our image size and then plop those two numbers into our equation in order to get our actual size of the nerve cell. So our image length, we can see here that this is 150 millimetres, um, this is 58 millimetres, so in order to calculate the space in between, we're just going to do a simple subtraction to get our length of our nerve cell being 92 millimetres. And we're then going to convert that into the correct units, of course. So we want micrometers. You're going to be an expert at doing that by now. We're just multiplying up by 1,000 to get 92,000 micrometers. And then we're just going to plop that all into our equation. We know our magnification, oh, ignore this. This is slightly wrong. Our magnification was 5,000. Um, so we are going to do 5 thousand there and our image size is um, 92,000 micrometers. Always put your units in and therefore we're going to get our actual size of our object being 18.4 micrometers in length. And actually that means that the um, on an earlier slide, I think I showed you the wrong answer. Whoopsie, we're going a bit too far ahead. Um, on an earlier slide, I think I showed you that this would be the answer. That's wrong. Um, sorry about that. 
just go back to this slide and we've worked through it and we've come to find that the answer is 18.4 micrometers. And if you were to give that in standard form, remember, you've just got to jump the decimal place over here. And that's only moved by one, which means it's going to be in standard form 1.84 times 10 to the 1 micrometer. But in standard science, kind of the general language of science, we wouldn't, or maths, we wouldn't write that one there because um, times 10 to the 1 is equal to times 10. So therefore, in standard form, that's going to be equal to 1.84 times 10 micrometers. OK, so well done. That was quite a tricky question to work through. So if you managed to follow through that, then really well done. If you didn't, just rewind and go back and work through it. Just remember that we had to find out two components here, the magnification, because it wasn't given to us in a clear way. It was given to us via this. And then we had to use that to then find the actual length of the nerve cell. So, now let's go on to just explore light and electron microscopes in further detail. So, light, let's start with light microscopes. So, cells in, in general can be seen with um, microscopes, and microscopes magnify small things that can't usually be seen by the naked eye. And therefore, this allows us to view cells within organisms because, you know, when I look at you, for example, I would not be able to see your cells. But perhaps if I got some kind of sample from you and put it under a light microscope, I would be able to visualise some of your cells. So light microscopes were created first. And light microscopes have a magnification power of up to times 2000. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they use the beams of light and lenses in order to magnify a living object to create an image. And the big benefit of them is that they're cheap and portable and they can be used to see cells and large organelles or subcellular structures such as nuclei. In contrast, electron microscopes, which you can see over here, are much, much, much better at magnifying um, objects. So they have a much higher magnifying power than light microscopes. And therefore, they can be used to see more subcellular structures, which further improved our understanding of biology. So this is just a summary of everything I said about light microscopes. And I really want you to try and draw contrast between light and electron microscopes because for your exam that's what they would want you to do and that's really all you need to know. So for example, I would say light microscopes have a magnification power of up to, of up to times 2000 whereas electron microscopes have a higher magnifying power of around times 2 million. So that could be your contrasts. So maybe you could draw up a table of similarities and differences or pros and cons between light and electron microscopes. So yeah, that's one there for you. So electron microscopes have a higher magnification. And um, that's because they use beams of electrons to make a magnified image, whereas light microscopes are just using beams of light and lenses in order to magnify a living object to create the image. In addition, electron microscopes also have a higher resolution. So remember at the start of the tutorial, we were talking about how resolution is the ability to, to um, discriminate between two separate points. So electron microscopes have this higher resolution and therefore they provide a much sharper image than light microscopes. But electron microscopes do have their drawbacks. So although they are really, really useful because they do magnify structures so much and therefore we can see very small structures such as ribosomes within the cell, they are very huge machines and they're very expensive to run and they really do need to be looked after really well. So that's why you probably don't have an electron microscope at your school and I'd be very, very impressed if you did because they are just very complicated machines to actually even just take care of. And also another drawback of electron microscopes is that they can only be used to view non-living cells, so you can't put anything live into an electron microscope, whereas at least with light microscopes you can visualise real-time living cells. So really well done for today, we covered a lot of points, especially with the calculations, they were quite tricky. Um, just go back and try your hand at rearranging that equation yourself and plopping in the numbers yourself. 
Um, and with the electron versus the light microscope, just remember to draw contrast between the two because I think that's really important for your exam. So well done for today and I'll see you in the next tutorial. So now if we move on to practice question three. So in this question, we, we're asked to calculate the actual length of the nerve cell in micrometers and to give our answer in standard four. So just note here that we are not given any information about magnification or image size. So that means we're going to have to work this out from the information that we've been given in the question. So this makes our task a little more complicated, but it's still really simple if you just work through systematically and think about the terms that you do have to work out. So perhaps pause the video here, jot down your equation again and give this a go. Um, but if you're not feeling it, or if you've had a go and got the right or the wrong answer, we're going to go over it anyway. So just continue on with me if you're feeling ready. So this is the answer you should have got, but we're going to work through it now. So we the first our first task is to calculate the magnification because we're going to need that to work out the actual length of the nerve cell. Because remember, our equation is magnification. Um, we've got our image size up here and we've got our actual length. So if you imagine this as our triangle, there we are. So we haven't been given our magnification. We've been given our image size in this, so we're going to have to work that out. And we ultimately, we want to come up with the actual length of the nerve cell. So our first task is to target this magnification and try to work this out. So first of all, to do that, we're going to work out the image length of the blue line that you can see over here. So note that it spans from 0 centimetres to 2 centimetres. And that's equivalent to 0 millimetres to 20 millimetres, because remember there's 10 millimetre in every centimetre. So therefore, your blue line is 20 millimetres in length. Now, we're going to have to convert this into micrometres, because remember, we're always wanting to work in the same units as your final answer. And the question is asking for your final answer to be in micrometres, so we're going to stick with that. So just like we did in the previous questions, we're going to multiply up from 20 millimetres, we're going to multiply up by 1,000 to convert that into micrometres. Because remember, there's 1,000 micrometres in every millimetre. And now that we've done that, it's just a simple plot into our equation because we have our image size, which is um, 20,000 micrometres. And we have our actual size, which is given here as four micrometers. So this is going in here as I, and four micrometers is going in here as actual size of the blue line. And that's going to give us our magnification. So it is really easy if you just work through it in a very systematic fashion. So 20,000 divided by 4, that's going to give us a magnification of 5,000. So that's brilliant. That means that we have now got one of our terms in our little triangular equation. We've got our magnification. So now we can move on and work out our image size. So take a look at this ruler. We can see that the nerve cell spans from about 5.8 centimetres here to 15 centimetres here. Or maybe we should work in millimetres because... We don't want decimal points here and there, so we'll say 150 millimetres to 58 millimetres. If you minus the two, you're going to get the distance between there, and that means we get 92 millimetres. But hang on a sec, remember, that's millimetres. We want our answer in micrometres, so we're going to have to do some conversions. And remember, all we do to get from millimetres to micrometres is multiply up by a 1,000, because there's 1,000 micrometres in every millimetre. So that's going to give us the image length as being 92,000 micrometers. So that's great because if we go back to our equation, magnification equals image size over actual size. So we've now got our magnification, which we found out on the last slide, and we've just worked out our image length. So now we can go back to the original question and calculate the actual length of this nerve cell here this A term. 
So we're going to take our magnification of 5,000 and our image length of 92,000 and do, and we're going to have to rearrange this equation actually because we're going to want to make that A equals I over M. And that's going to give us 92,000 divided by 5,000, which is 18.4 micrometers. And just remember that the question asked for our answer in standard form. And remember, all we're doing in standard form is pushing this decimal point to the front. It's only moved one place, so that's going to be 1.84 times 10 micrometers. So it's actually 10 to the 1, but we don't tend to include this one term anyway. So it's 1.84 times 10 micrometers. Um, so that's brilliant. Great. Thanks for watching this free video from Study Mind. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to catch our newest videos by clicking below and leave a comment on a topic you'd like a video on. Click here to watch more videos in our series for GCSE Biology or visit our website studymind.co.uk for free past paper compilations by topic and specification.